Good morning, gladiators. We are about to play Saluto! Hey everybody, I am Oliver Joyce and welcome to another episode of The Games Gladiator. A rare daytime episode because I have the house to myself. <laughs> rare these days. Today we're checking out a game that I actually played in Season 1. And I say this a lot, but this is one of my favourite games of all time. Probably a top five game. Maybe even my favourite game. It's right up there. It's Terraria. First released in 2011. And uh, it's been around now nine years. And finally, they're still making content for it. 1.4 is the new version. It's called The Journey's End. And they say it's the last big patch the game will ever get. And every few years or so, I try to go back and play a bit of Terraria because I just love it so much. I've been playing Terraria this last week or so, so I thought I'd invite you along on a little journey with me uh, to my world. I'm playing as Gandalf the Wizard. Don't know why, but I just chose that. And the world is called Middle Earth, and uh, we're basically going to dig, build a little house, and go exploring for a while. So come with me. If you've never played Terraria before, you're in for a treat. If you've played it and haven't seen the new version, um, we'll chat about that as well. All right, get your pickaxe, because we're heading to the world of Terraria. All right, here's Terraria, the familiar title screen with the uh, scrolling backgrounds. Some beautiful new parallax backgrounds and this tons and tons of new background art, which is really cool. We go single player, load up Gandalf. So I've been playing for about four hours this week over the, the late nights once I finish my game dev. We load up Middle Earth. I don't know why I chose Middle Earth, I just felt like the right thing to do at the time. Here's our hero Gandalf. Um, I've got an inner tube at the moment, which is kind of funny. It allows me to float around. So yeah, 1.4 just has tons of new additions. Like you notice the trees swaying in the wind, atmospheric effects like wind, rain, um, snow, all this kind of really cool stuff. Um, the patch notes are unbelievable. There's just pages and pages and pages and pages of it. There is a new golf um, edition. Here's our dodgy house. Not super impressive so far. I haven't spent much time on it. Got a room for everybody. There's 5,000 items in the game now, which is incredible. Um, I got a nice umbrella so we can float back down. Whee! They've added tons of convenience things like you can hold down shift now to just uh, sort of context sensitive. If I want to um, chop down a tree, just hold down shift rather than having to select you know, the axe rather than the pickaxe, and then it just defaults back to whatever you had before. Oops, shouldn't be attacking the critters. There's an incredibly amount of stuff you can do in this game now, as far as stuff you can add to your house, um, full-on electrical circuits and traps and stuff like that. We're gonna go, I'll show you the map in a second. We're playing in a large world, so this is our world. This is where we are, here. This is my main route down. I've been going right down so far to here, dug down that far, and found a mine cart that took us up there. I also found this other sort of jungle passage down here that took me all the way down to here. I found a deep, deep lake, and I kind of dug down there and didn't go any further. Yeah, it is a big game. If I want to make it all the way to the uh, ocean at the edge of the map, it's going to take me quite a few game days. Um, Terraria is one of those games that the first time I played it, I fell in love with it and thought, you know, this is the game I wish I made. And I said that about a few games, Ultima and um, Darkest Dungeon and something like that. But this game, it's, it's perfect. It really is, I believe, the perfect kind of sandbox adventure game. More so, I mean, I haven't played enough Minecraft to really judge it, but I feel like there's something about the 2D nature of this that just is instantly accessible, simple, yet completely deep, deep experiences. So much you can do, so much you can experience. And the fact that it has like bosses and, um, you know, so many special events and things that I don't believe Minecraft has. I think Minecraft Dungeons, which just came out today, might have a lot of that stuff. We're exploring somewhere new, we're floating down. This umbrella has been really useful. Sorry. I scratched my nose, I didn't pick it. 
<laughs> I'm sure I didn't. But so you forget your own camera. Ah oh dear. So now this tube is cool. We can float on the water if we want. And we can actually sink down if you want to sink down. Quite helpful. So now the biome has switched to this sort of... Um, just for a little while. That's interesting. It kind of switched to that one. But that was a rocky bluff. And now we're in the um, corruption, which is a little bit tougher. And notice my umbrella doesn't do that much damage against these sort of uh, shimmers. I need a better weapon if I'm going to sort of defeat them. But I'm actually going to try and get past this area and see what's on the other side. Um, the crimson is basically like the corruption. One spawns on your world, only one or the other. Oh, it looks a bit tough. One problem with this umbrella is that... Uh, I should switch back to my sword at some point. It only does a horizontal attack, and these guys attack you vertically. But yeah, the crimson, you basically want to cleanse the world of it by a series of sort of rituals and things you do later in the game, and you end up summoning, you know, bosses to fight and so on. Scary music as always. I'm coming to the end of it in a second. I should be sure the desert now. I do have a sword. Are you going to follow me? All right. Go back. Got quite a long range. So what's new in Terraria 1.4? There you can play golf. Um, there's this journey mode that basically allows you to set all the parameters of the world. You can set up, you know, what items and distribute things. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at this kind of snowy biome. I've never had that before. Let's put our sword in slot number five. Because we need that sword. It's a bit more powerful. See, it has a more range attack. I've never seen the snow. That's really cool. Is this something you can mine? Ice block. And you know, I'm sure that ice block is something you can use in your house. Little snowy slimes. What are these guys? Ice slime. It's one of those games you just have to play for yourself. I was telling my friend John about this the other day. I'm trying to explain the appeal of it. And for me, it's that the game starts you off ultra low power, super simple. You can walk, run, jump. You've got a little pickaxe, a little sword, and a little hammer. And then by the end of it, you're flying around on, you know, lava sharks with, you know, shooting stars out of cannons. And it's incredible. The amount of variety of things you can find to do. And each item that you can get is different and it has some different purpose in the world, you know. Everything from yo-yos and flails to sort of um, ropes and, you know, this inner tube here right now to fall on, you know, mine carts and rocket shoes. It's, it's kind of fun, but it's like a little treasure hunt because you go on these adventures and you're sort of constantly finding interesting new items. There is an end game to it, of course. There's a bunch of bosses you have to defeat. So we're heading this way. Still nowhere near the end of the map. What we're going to do is we're going to dig down soon, and I'll show you the underground area, which is kind of the, the main area. Although we could actually go down this snowy cavern if we like. That's something new. Well, oh, I really should put my umbrella. Why am I fighting with a pickaxe? There's a chest there. Or something. What's in the chest? Another umbrella, a zealous umbrella. Is that better than ours? Let's take it anyway. I've actually got too much junk. Need to. Should have sold some before I started the adventure. Copper bars will take. One cool thing is you can actually um, sort items now, and you can sort my inventory and sort this. There's also a quick building thing now that allows you to just replace blocks. So if you had a wooden house, you could easily replace it with, um, you know, a different material like stone or gold or whatever. Okay, and coins, cool. Uh, so look, I'll show you this. There's also this cool thing called a void chest, which I don't have yet, and allows you to basically store your inventory when you're on the run. So it sort of follows you around, you don't have to go back to your house. The 
we've got a mining helper that's, that lights up the world a little bit, but usually you'd be putting torches everywhere you go. But the mining helmet lights things up a little bit for us. Run into a bit of a dead end there, or dig through that. There's a lot of digging in this game. Eventually you can sort of bomb your way through things and even blast your way through walls with you know, powerful, powerful guns and so on. Snowy caverns, I've never been here before. What's in here? What's kind of cool is also there's these things uh, called fairies and they are, you know, literal little sprite fairies that they come up to you and they float around. Some iron ore. And what they do is they want you to follow them. And when you get to a certain, um, you follow them for a while and they'll lead you to like a really nice special treasure, which is a new addition to the game. I found so many cool new things in this uh, 1.4. What's remarkable is this game, been out since 2011, it has sold millions of copies. We're talking, you know, 20 million or so, maybe more. Maybe quite, that number might be too conservative. It has had 400,000 reviews on Steam. Uh, to put that in perspective, Sword and Sandals Classic Collection has had 450 reviews, and that's done okay for me. So this has made many, 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 many millions of dollars for the team that built this Relogic, who, um, and I, and they still update the game. So they are obviously developers who care about their game, and you know, and just keep giving back. Oh, we found something nice down here. Down here is a, uh, a life heart. So this thing here, life crystal, sorry. So if we um, get our life heart, where did I put that? I've got too much crap here. I need to sell some of it. Where is the life heart? I should use that one as well, actually, mana crystal. That gives them a mana. You can actually change the uh, look of this to make it sort of more RPG or more classic kind of thing, which is really a sweet little addition. Where for aren't thou? I oh, I didn't have an. Oh, there you go. I had too much stuff. There you go. So cool. So we got an extra heart. You find those all through the deeper the world. The deeper you go, the more the world changes, and you sort of end up all the way downhill. Every now and again, you'll find a cool little thing like this. A little sort of cottage that someone's made. Take that portrait. And he's got it, he had a little chest. In that chest he had oh a deadly ice blade. Oh that's a nice weapon. We'll take that. Yes, please. Um an ice machine! Sweet! This guy left some nice stuff. Um what can I get rid of that we don't need? Spelunker potion shows the location of treasure and all. That'll be useful. Get rid of that. Put them in the blowpipe and throwing knives you don't really need, so we'll leave them there. That was a good find, my friends. As we descend further in the cavern, see the background changes now. We are currently. You can get sort of depth meters and so on. Um, I guess barometers. No, Brom is a weather thing. What's a depth meter called? I've forgotten. You don't learn anything in the games, Clay. Yeah, that's for sure. No homeschool anything here. Um, all right, so we're going to dive down into this icy, icy lake. See where it takes us. Oh, back up there. You have a limited amount of breath, so until you get like a water pipe and that kind of thing. That's the cool thing about it. Everything is... Um, We've gone about as far as we can down here. So I'm going to put a torch to as a marker in case I come back and we're going to use a recall potion to return to the world. Now nighttime. At nighttime, you know, like Minecraft, zombies come out and um, will kind of attack you. And every now and then you get sort of blood harvest type events. My house is pretty crap. I've got a little sign here from Gandalf. Go back to the shadows. You shall not pass. Um, I'm not going to do too much selling because it'll be a bit boring for you on video, but what we're going to do is we're going to go to the piggy bank, we're going to drop off some of our money. Um, stack that. 
Um, we've got some barns as well, which we might drop down here. I want to be able to forge some armor soon because I've got some pretty junk armor, but I'll probably do that in another video. This isn't going to be a long play session. I just wanted to show you a few of the cool things that Terraria 1.4 had. Uh, if you've never played it before, I can't recommend this highly enough. I played it um, yesterday morning for about 20 minutes with my little boy Isaac, and we don't, he's very young, so we don't really play many games together on a um, computer, but he loved this. We kind of went down into um, the caves, and he's into mushroom hunting and that kind of thing when we go into our uh, hikes and so on. And he was just obsessed with, oh, look, daddy, a mushroom, a mushroom. And then we found some slimes. And this is a really nice sort of bonding moment, just sort of the first sort of video game experience with my little boy and i'm glad it could be this game because it's such a magical magical adventure um i want to sell this the shop we want to sell got lots of rope but we keep that um wooden fishing pole we don't really get it we'll get that another time we don't really want it for now can't imagine i'll be doing any fishing anytime soon sell the marigolds sandcastle bucket like sandcastles, that's pretty cute. So many sort of like you know, they're items that don't really, you know, have a great purpose, but they um they're fun. What else can we sell? Blink root. Stuff you can pick up later. A lot of junk. Jellyfish statue, I don't know why I picked that up. Copper pickaxe. Alright, so. You also have all these items you can sort of forge down here and they get sort of this list changes as you pick up different items and get more abilities and there are a lot of them um i still think that sort of forged mem menu is a little bit clunky and there's probably a, a better way around it just rather than scrolling up and down but i haven't actually discovered it um we can make some copper bars if the mine we could you use these bars to buy items and so on Anything at the forge we can do? No, okay. Um, you can take the helmet off as well if you want. You can kind of like have vanity items if you wanted to. Like if I didn't want to wear that in a tube, I didn't have to. But you could have it in the sort of vanity slot. So it'd be like, it shows you wearing one item and then... Okay, so... Um, let's... Um... You've got this quick stack to nearby chests as well, so you can kind of put the items in the chests and so on. You've also got a um, bestiary now, which is cool. It tells you like... Here are the things that you've met. So, a rabbit, squirrel, um, umbrella slime, mother slime. These are the creatures that I've discovered so far. And um, once you discover more, you get bonuses and that kind of thing, and the sort of zookeepers you can meet, which is pretty cool. But these, I've only met I've 96 of the 500 monsters, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, this isn't my first time playing Terraria. Obviously, uh, I've played it. Quite a few times over the years, I've, I've spent 70 something hours in Terraria uh, since I bought it. Which, you know, compared to a lot of people's playtime of games, you know, in the hundreds and hundreds of hours, isn't that much. But for me, that's a lot because I tend to, I love playing games, but um, I don't have that much time to play them anymore. But every few years, I always make a bit of time to play Terraria for a few weeks. Because I've been working hard on, you know, swords and sandals and obviously being a dad and everything. Oh, this shoots. That's awesome. That's so cool. I haven't had that much time to play Terraria or to play any games, but when patch 1.4 came out, I knew I had to try it. And so I made a bit of time. Basically been working till about sort of, you know, 10, 10.30 at night and then firing up Terraria for a couple of hours um, the last couple of nights. And I'm tired, but I'm, I'm just, I'm going to bed happy, you know. Sometimes you got to take time for yourself and just, you know, sit back and play a game, have a bit of fun. How does a game do? You learn. You learn about systems and things. If you're making games, and I know there are some game developers that follow me and watch these channels, um, watch my videos, I can't uh, stress highly enough how you should play a lot of games. Not, not, you know, complete a lot of games or even, you know, play a lot of games for a long time. But what you want to do is play a variety of games because you can learn from different genres. Now, we've already been all the way down here. We use the umbrella to float down. I've been all the way down here, as you can see. Go away! I feel like the queen of the clan, but like, go away! Well, Mary Poppins is probably more apt. 
This was a little um, abandoned cabin I discovered a long time ago. Oh, that ice saw it really um, ripped through people. Kind of mining helmet, that's cool. So where on our map were we? We went down here and we've gone that way and that way. So we're nearly to the bottom of uh, as far as I'd explored. So we dig through there. Terraria is one of those classic games, much like the World of Warcraft or, or any you know truly addictive um, exploration kind of game. The hours just pass, you know, they really do. Um, I'm doing a lot of game development today, but I've taken a couple of hours, you know, just an hour or so to make this video and play a game. But I know that this hour isn't going to feel like an hour at all. You know, we're already probably up to 20 minutes or more in recording this video. Here's a minecart. Let's get in this. I'll show you this. Watch this. Whoa. <laughs> so these minecarts appear through the world and they take you to different areas. I've already been up there. I'm going to explore it to the other end. You can kind of run people over and then... Well, they take a long time to slow down. So where do we want to go down? I wonder. There's our map. We almost want to keep digging down close to where we've dug down. So eventually you can dig this thing called a elevator. And what that is... Um, it's just a shaft that goes right down because you eventually you want to get down to hell. That's your ultimate goal. So I always forget how to... Oh, get me out of there. This happened to me last time. I couldn't remember how to get out of the minecart. Which is highly embarrassing. Playing an acorn, that, that'll help, sure. How does one exit the minecart? All I've done is broken the minecart, which wasn't very nice. Sometimes it's not super clear. Oh, there you go, click on the icon about, you know, how to do some things. But, you know, there is an amazing um, wiki on this game that's many hundreds and hundreds of pages long that often you can refer to if you want to need to know how to craft something or you know, what, what's your next logical progression in the game? Because aside from just digging and exploring, as I said, there is a point to this, and that is to, you know, defeat the bosses and clear the corruption in the world. And to do that, there's sort of lots of rituals and sequences you have to go through as we dive down. Down into the deep parts of the world. What's down here? And it gets a lot deeper than where we are now. Is it Piranha? There's some uh, topaz we can mine. I tend to leave the torches just as a little marker of uh, kind of where I've explored, just this yeah, as a future, you know, frame of reference for myself. Because until you build a hell of it, you find yourself going up and down these things. You you can actually build little, um, you know, cabins and so on. That's a deep lake. I love sort of lakes in water and in games. It always kind of fascinates me. Especially deep ones. It's kind of, there's something a little terrifying about it and fascinating. What's over there? Do you explore the lake or? Oh, that looks like a, some kind of dynamite. Down here. What are they? Salamanders. I've never seen salamanders before. He dropped the sword. Oh, what sword did he drop? Did he drop a sword? Or did I just imagine that? No, it was just nothing. I really need um, oh explosives, cool. So we can get a, we can use that. Every now and again, meteorites drop, and you want to um, crimson one. I've never seen that. Every now and again, you find meteorites and so on, and you want to just sort of destroy them quickly because it can be very slow to do if you're um, using pickaxe. So these explosives can come in handy. But we've sort of reached a bit of a dead end there. We might go back up. 
Uh, Queen Poison. How miserable. Where's my ropes? I need to sort out my inventory a lot better than this. Okay, we're gonna throw some ropes up. What am I doing? Sometimes I sort of weirdly forget how to do things in the game. You know what's a better way to do things sometimes is just um, build stone walls. You know what? Who cares? Let's not go back up. Let's keep digging down. Do some digging. Whoa. Switch weapons. I don't know if uh, any of you guys have ever done any... Oh, there you go. That's the way down. If you've ever streamed games or, you know, played games on video, do you ever get this weird sort of, um, kind of stage fright? I certainly do. And it might not seem it, but you can definitely see in the way I play. Sometimes I get flustered and I'll do some dumb things. Whoa. And it's because I'm sort of... I feel self-conscious. There's a little dart trap there. So even, you know... Someone as old as me and, you know, game dev veteran, etc. I get stage fright. You know, I'm not the best YouTuber. Oh, cloud in a bottle. Oh, double jump. Yes, please. We want that. I'm glad I went down there. I can crawl. Whoa, crazy. What's this one here? Ah, so you can summon the Isle of Cthulhu with that. That's for a boss fight later. I'm not going to do that in this game, but now I can... I should be able to... Uh, we should do healing potion here because it's a little low. Watch this. Yes, cloud in the bottle. That's a great, great, great thing to have. So we've been a bit lucky. We've got the ice blade and we've got that. We've, you know, uh, you guys and girls are bringing me luck. Sorry, I, I appreciate it. Do we want a gold chest? We'll play some of the wooden ones. Yeah, we do actually. Why had that? Get rid of this some of this crap. <laughs> I dug up a minecart track. Let's use some. Uh, I was gonna say use some explosives, but I can't bother. We don't need to anyway. There is another minecart down here. Bats. Bats in games. Those who have watched me for many years doing these things know that I am no fan of bats in video games. Real life, no problem. Video games. It's because they have this sort of oscillating movement pattern that really messes with you. There's a mine sh uh, cart there, but I'm not going to take it. We're going to keep traveling down. It is tempting though, but it can take you all around the map. Well, we can do that another time. All right, there will be gold in these hills. There are them hills. How are you guys all doing? Are you playing anything good lately? Uh, let me know in the comments. One other thing to note, and I'll probably mention this in a future video, is that um, those who've been following me kind of know that um, my wife and I have another baby soon, in like a like five or six weeks, about six weeks or so. So that'll be the end of these games where it is for a little while because I don't know if you've ever had kids, but they kind of eat into your time, especially newborns. Um, so any free time I get, I'm gonna have to be working on the game and I won't be able to play games, unfortunately. Oh, who's this guy? Ah, oh, the shop. Who knew? Oh, what? That sounds cool. I can't afford it. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and I can't wait to have a you know a new baby again. It's like it's just amazing. I feel very blessed. But what am I buying those for? I don't need them. Well, I would have liked that green counterweight. Anyway, sidetracked. But yeah, that will probably mean Games Better Season 3 is cut very short. I've only done about six or seven episodes. And you know, I'll I'll bring it back again at some point. But to be honest, it's by far like the least popular videos I do. And I I know why that is, you know. People um, subscribe to my channel because they want Sword and Sandals news, which is fair enough. And I get that. But I like playing games too every now and again. And I kind of want to talk to you guys and share, you know, my adventures with you. So I put them up. And they get 
not many views, but now this is my other videos anyway. The thing is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not about the views, is it? It's about the enjoyment and the experience. Um, I'm a professional game developer and that's how I make my money. I'm not a professional YouTuber, so it doesn't really matter if I, you know, have 10 subscribers and 10 views or a million subscribers or a million views. You know, that would be cool, but he would reach the lava area, which probably means that's as far down as we want to go right now because we will get instantly crushed. You can actually um, guide water down to the lava if you run out. And you can create this, of, I think it's obsidian. There's dart traps there, a bit nasty. Hmm. Yeah, that's about as far as we can go down there. So we're going to recall back to home. Get off. You know, it's funny. I still haven't built a bed yet because I haven't made any silk to build a bed. And that's one of the first things you do. So when we respawn, we respawn back there. If you're wondering, oh, we'll use it again. Was it waste? Mushrooms, daddy! My little boy always likes to say, Isaac. Loves discovering them. Tell him, don't eat them! Don't eat them! So we're back home now. Um, yeah. Let's uh, pause that there. <laughs> that was so much fun. Half an hour just went by really, really quickly. And, you know, I would love to just play that for the rest of the day and do no more work. And, you know, if I was less disciplined, I certainly would. And, you know, maybe I should. All right. Thank you for uh, joining me today. And uh, as always, you know, if you like these videos and my other stuff, and then you should please subscribe. Woo! And, you know, I appreciate all the comments. Thanks for all the comments on my uh, endurance video. I really appreciate it because I was feeling a little down the other day and just feel, you know, a little bit deflated. But, um, yeah, it definitely helped me. You know, it's not always uh, rainbows and sunshines, but, um, you know, we're all getting through the pandemic pretty well and, um, you know, making the best of it. I uh, wish everybody health and happiness. And until next time, uh, bye for now.